There's been a lot of interest in artificial intelligence recently, especially AI-generated content such as the images created by Midjourney or DALI, or text content generated by GPT. And while I don't think that AI is anywhere close to replacing human creativity just yet, there's no doubt that this latest batch of algorithms provides some really useful tools that can be used to assist designers, artists, writers, and even coders. Now in this video, I'm going to demonstrate another application of AI, which is a decision classification function. And unlike the content generation examples that require server clusters to process billions of parameters of data, I'm going to create a machine learning model that's small enough to fit on a humble microprocessor like this ESP32. Now, machine learning has been around for some time, but people are still coming up with interesting new applications where it can be used. And if you're familiar with this channel, you'll be unsurprised to hear that the application I've chosen is for an escape room controller. And when I was researching this video, I asked around and I couldn't find any examples where people had already done this. So you may be wondering, well, why would you want to use AI in an escape room? Well, consider the puzzle that I for one have encountered in several wartime themed escape rooms where players need to use a key to tap out a message in Morse code, making dots and dashes. Now, the International Morse Code Standard actually defines timings for how long each of those marks should be, as well as the spaces between elements in a character, between characters and between letters. But most escape room players are not trained Morse operators, and you'll get a huge variety in the inputs that different players provide for the same message. So if we want an escape room puzzle controller that tests whether players have input the correct Morse code sequence, we need some way of passing this input, this series of long and short signals, and decoding it into letters. And the most common way I've seen of doing this is to choose some arbitrary duration, say 200 milliseconds, and say that any input that's shorter than that amount of time is treated as a dot, and anything that's longer than that is treated as a dash. But that's a very arbitrary cutoff point, and you've still got the problem of how long do players leave between the characters in a word and between words themselves. And in fact, if you've ever tried to solve a Morse code puzzle where you're transcribing a message as you hear it, you've probably encountered those problems yourself. It's actually very difficult and prone to error. So I wondered whether this was a problem that artificial intelligence could help us solve. And here's the approach I took. First, I needed to gather some training data. So I wrote a simple program using the Arduino IDE that measured the duration that a button was held down for and each time the button was pressed and released, it printed that time out to the serial monitor. Then I asked a bunch of different people to come along and tap out each letter of the alphabet in Morse using the button. Now just like when you gather a sample of any data, you want your training data for a machine learning model to use the same parameters as you're going to use in your real application. So if you wanted to use this in an escape room, you'd want to use the same type of button mounted in the same prop and then record data from a sample of representative players using it. But for the purposes of this video, I just created a quick prototype and I've asked some of my friends and family to come along and have a go. I recorded about 10 data points for each letter and then I simply copied and pasted the values from the serial monitor into separate CSV files, one for each letter. So here we have my readings of inputs of the letter F, this is R, and this is V, for example. Now, to create the classification model, I wrote a Python program using the scikit-learn library. So this is a very powerful machine learning library, um, but it's open source, and it's also got loads of examples that demonstrate its functions that are actually pretty easy to understand, even if you're not that familiar with machine learning or with Python in general. So here's the code I used. At the top, we include some generic libraries. These are just gonna help load the training data from the CSV files. 
Then we have the SK Learn library itself that contains the model that we're going to use. There's several different models available. I'm using one called a Random Forest Classifier, but you can actually see many alternatives in the documentation there. And then this is a very helpful little extra library that's going to convert the output from the classification function into C code that we can import straight into our Arduino sketch. Now you can install both the scikit-learn library and the micro mlgl library from a running pip install from the command line. This is a helper function that loads the training data from all of the CSV files that are contained in the specified subfolder. It uses the file names to label the features in the data set. So that's why I named my files a.csv, b.csv, c.csv, etc. because the a, b, c will be what we want the function to return when we classify our data. And then we have the main function at the bottom of the code here. So just like the main function in an Arduino sketch, this is what is called when the program is executed. And what it does is it loads the features from the CSV files in the training data subdirectory. Then it creates a classifier from those features. I say I'm using the random forest classifier, which I imported at the top here, but you can play around with different types of classifiers and also the parameters that you specify here. And then we use the port function from the micro ML gen library to take the output from that classifier and turn it into C code. And then finally, we simply print that to the screen. So if I now run this script here, so we just go run module, save that. And we'll see that the output here is squeeze text. Now I could right click and copy that to the clipboard, uh, but what I'll do is I'll just expand it here to show you. So we have our prediction function which takes our vector and it has worked out the cutoff points that it wants to apply for each of these features and it's assigning scores to different possible outcomes you can see here. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, those votes will end up corresponding to the different possible outputs. So we've got A, B, C that's based on the supplied class index and that's based on the votes that each thing received. So now what we can do is return to the sketch that's running on the ESP32 and modify it so that instead of simply printing out the length of time that the button is held down for, it's going to pass that array of durations to the classification model we've just trained. So I've taken the output that scikit-learn generated and I've put it in a new file in my Arduino project called model.h and I've then included that at the top of my sketch here. Then I've created a global reference to the classifier function. Now you can see it's contained in a slightly complicated namespace here, but from this point onwards we can simply refer to it in our code as classifier. And now in the callback when a character has been received I've placed a condition. So if we're gathering training data we output the duration of timings to the serial monitor, just as before, but once the model has been trained, we instead pass that array to the predict label function from the classifier. And that's going to output the letter that the model thinks that that pattern of Morse inputs represents, based on what it's learned from the training data supplied. So this is the moment of truth. Finally, we get to test our AI Morse code decoder. I'm going to type out a message in Morse code on the button and I'll show you the output from the classifier function on the serial monitor output. Now there's just a few key points I want to draw your attention to as I do this. Firstly, I didn't personally input any of the training data. That was based on timings I gathered from a sample of other people. So the model has not been trained to my particular style or rhythm at all. In fact, it's never dealt with my input at all before. Secondly, at no point in the code do I ever specify what the Morse code pattern for any particular letter is. All I did was supply a set of timing data and I let scikit-learn figure it out. Now it's applying the rules that it learned to a new set of data which it's never seen before. 
And there are two elements of feedback I've added. The first is the audible beep, which simply confirms when a button press has been registered. And the second is an LED, which lights up when an input is being read. If no input is detected for a certain amount of time, or if the player enters four dots and dashes in a row, which is the maximum amount needed to encode any letter, we know that the player has finished entering the current character, and we can turn the LED off just to let them know that it's ready for the next input. And as I hope you can see, it's reading my input perfectly. Now, while that might not be as impressive as some of the generative art that DALI or other AI produces, I think that's pretty cool. Now, as always, I hope you found this video interesting and informative, and perhaps it's inspired you for some new ways that you can use tech in your escape room game. I think the really interesting thing about machine learning is that you don't tell the computer what the application is going to be. You simply provide it the training data and the outputs, and it works out how you make the decisions to get from one to another. I think there's loads of possible ways you could supply player input or data from different sorts of sensors that are used in an escape room to generate a given output. Currently, a lot of the time with escape room games, we either have very simple code logic or we get to a certain point and we go, well, that's too tricky for computers to work out. So we'll have a games master manually override uh, in that situation. I think it'd be really interesting if artificial intelligence could be used to fill the gap somewhat in between. So if you've got any other ideas about ways that this kind of approach could be used in an escape room, I'd really love to hear them. Do write them in the comments below. Other than that, I just want to say thank you so much to all of my Patreon supporters who enable me to create these videos each month. I really do value your ongoing support. Thank you so much. And I will upload the code which I've created and I will put a link in the description where you can find that. As I mentioned, I'm using all entirely open source libraries so you can go and try this yourself and see what amazing ways you can come up with your own artificial intelligence projects. I'd love to hear about them if you do them. And I will look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, cheers, bye.